Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time of day it is, wherever you are right now. Thank you for tuning in to The Conversations with Dr. Don Show. The show is produced and broadcast from Portland, Oregon, USA. And for your first time viewers, Conversations with, Do with Dr. Don is an ongoing series of one hour standalone talk shows where I interview interesting people like most of you out there, about who they are as unique, one-of-a-kind individuals and about whatever it is we've decided to talk about. And we'll be talking about uh, Life in Motion. That's the title of this show. And my guest this evening is Walter Miller, who's a friend of John Poling, and that's another story which I'll tell you later <laughs> on. So, Hi, Dr. Don. <laughs> how are you feeling right now? Pretty good. Oh. Pretty good. Are you nervous? Yeah. Uh, well, are you more nervous than me? No. How do you know? <laughs> Just not. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm, fi I'm usually nervous, especially when I've got somebody for the first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The guest I had earlier t this evening with John Poling, uh, we've been together for so long until I'm really nervous around him because he always keeps me on my toes. <laughs> but I'm a little nervous, and after about two or three minutes it calms down, and then I'm doing my job. Plus, I'm looking at you and enjoying you. And it's a one-way street because I'm asking the questions and you're giving me the answers. But if I ask you a question that you don't want to answer, you can say, I don't want to answer that. And oh. you know, told me to get lost or something. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to hide. Yet. Okay. <laughs> Yet. Uh-oh. <laughs> You've been following John. Well, so my friend John Pauling is in the studio while this show is going on because he was in the, in the, the chair you're in earlier on this evening because we've done no, two shows. Yeah, different yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, as you know, the show goes in two major segments. The first segment is what I call the bio segment where I talk to you about who you are personally. And then uh, as we get into the second half of the show, uh, about the second half, we talk about life in motion and what that really means to you because you chose that title. Mm -hmm. And I thought it sounds catchy, so let's try that for a title and see how it turns out. Okay, you ready? Yes. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, when were you born? 57. 57. 1957. Uh, uh, February 14th, Valentine's Day. February 14th, Valentine's Day. Yep. And where were you born? Seattle, Washington. Seattle. Fort Lawton. Fort Lawton Army Hospital. Yeah, I was in Fort Lawton for a, a bit. Oh, yeah. really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Even my, mom, my parents still have the the receipt <laughs> for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I, have it in, I have it in a little album, a receipt, and the actual orders that they could actually have me there from because Dad was in the Coast Guard, so it was the Army Hospital. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was eight fifty. That's how much it how much it cost. Eight dollars and fifty cents. It says, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things are really different now. Oh, aren't around. they? Aren't they? Yeah. And uh, yeah, why were you born? Why? Uh, I think it was just one of those things. Uh, they wanted mom and dad want to have kids. Mm -hmm. You know, and I how think many mom, mom, <coughs> mom wanted to have kids to take care of the house. Mm -hmm. That's why it's, uh, it's my suspicion. You have brothers and sisters. I had Three sisters. Uh -huh. I have uh, one that was one year younger than me, two years younger than me, and nine years younger than me. Uh -huh. You're the oldest. I'm the oldest. You're the yeah. senior. Yep. Do they respect you because no. you're older? No, I never got that. <laughs> never got that. I was the one that had to be had to be uh, making sure that they didn't do anything wrong. And if they did, it was still my fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, you have a religious preference nowadays. Right? Yeah, I'm a, like a Pentecostal. Yeah, Pentecostal. What's Pentecostal like? Pentecostal is the uh, believe in tongues and uh, things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can you speak in tongues to me right now? No, it's not something you just do. You have it's to be inspired. Yeah, you or inspired. Or? Yeah, you speak in the spirit. Yeah, yeah, one of my I have five daughters, and one of my daughters is a Pentecostal, and I get her to talk to me, and I says, I don't know what you're talking about, and she laughs at me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Neither do we. 
it's, it's interesting uh, how individuals choose their own religion, their own way of looking at things. And mm -hmm. yeah. now, we were Baptists, Catholic, uh, moved around, you know, doing other things, but uh, Pentecost is what I, mean, what I ended up being. Uh, so you're following that religion now? Yeah, yeah. How often do you go to services? Every, every, every Sunday. Every Sunday? Yeah. Uh -huh. And you talk, you talk in tongues? Yep. Uh -huh. It's good for you. Mm -hmm. What does religion do for you that makes you unique or lovable? Well, it's not, <laughs> I don't know about lovable, uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, but being, I guess, being unique. But it's just, uh, you have to believe in something. Uh -huh. You know, and I never, growing up, I was, I was uh, like a, more like an academic. If the Romans believed in it, and thought that he was uh, a threat, that that was good enough for me, and that 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 uh, you know I, it was one of those things I I, was, I grew up believing, and so I never was a, a revivalist type person, you know, that had to have the uh, the spirit move you. It was always something I I was entrenched in my entrenched in me, mm -hmm. you know, and I just. Uh, so you just try not to hurt any, anybody else and believe in believe in the afterlife and and the what do you call it the uh, the into, into the um, intelligent design. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Intelligent design. I mm -hmm. haven't heard that for a while. What does yeah. that mean? Intelligent design. That well, the, the universe. Until there's so many, you know, there's too many things. You know, I, I, and you watch the um, the scientists telling you that we've explained everything, and then they'll tell you, oh, by the way, this we can't explain. We don't understand it, but it's wonderful. <laughs> 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 I love watching those shows. Where they, yeah, they, they, they so there was, there was somebody or something, something above. Something, yeah, something. Intelligence, there's some intelligence involved in how yeah. it is that things are the way that they are. Yeah. yeah. Rather, rather than evolution. Do you believe in evolution? No, no. Uh -huh. Okay. No, it's just too. If the, the to me, if, if evolution, then some of the monkeys should have changed. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if if certain ones, just certain ones did, just just two, <laughs> <laughs> just two, and then all of a sudden we're we're here. No, I think there'd be more than that. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I was Roman Catholic uh, kid. Mm -hmm. Ultra boy for years and years. <coughs> Eventually, found that uh, <coughs> I couldn't eat meat on Fridays and a few other things that mm -hmm. I found later on as I got older. That was hooey. Yeah. So I gave it up, and then I <coughs> didn't have any particular religion for many years. And now, <coughs> I see myself as a, as a humanist, a skeptic, or one of those mm -hmm. terms. Perhaps even an, an atheist. Not atheist, because that's a pejorative. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I believe in goodness. Mm -hmm. That's my philosophy. It's your choice, though. Being it's nice. your choice. Yeah. And uh, it, it stands me in good stead. And I've got some stuff I learned as a Catholic. And I probably had, uh, had parents like your parents where I'd probably be talking about my life as a Pentecostal of years ago. No, my, 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 it was my mother taking us to places but it wasn't anything that she taught us. It was, you know, she said, go to church. Mm -hmm. And we never taught at home. It was what we'd learn it in Bible school and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was not a, not a home thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How about your education? What kind of formal education did you have? I had, uh, I, I did graduate. I had 14 schools in six states. Fourteen schools, schools in, in six, six states. states. Yeah, and twelfth grade I had three of them. So I grew, the, when I graduated, I in Washington High School it, on Twelfth and Stark. But here in Portland. In, here in Portland, but I only knew them for three months, so I don't go to high school reunions or anything else. It's no sense. Uh -huh. I don't ever knew. I don't know anybody, really. Yeah. So I, uh, I was able to, just, you know, I was lucky to make it through. You know, because you're changing curriculum, you're changing everything. Sometimes my English is really bad. I can't, 
pre pronoun stuff because I I didn't learn it. I did, uh, maybe that was a gap that the teachers missed. Did you have but any any re resentment uh, about that? I was scared every day. Really? Every I was this I was this little bitty kid. I was five foot three and weighed 110 pounds in tenth grade. Oh wow! Yeah, I was this little, and all of a sudden I shot up. Uh -huh. Six six inches between tenth and eleventh grade. Uh -huh. I was just and picked on constantly. We we're new. You you the new kid. Always new. I always yeah. new. You had to make friends, and I used had to use humor to get through everything. We that's what we did at home. We would have to defend ourselves at at the dinner table. <laughs> 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 you know, come up with something funny or something because Dad was always talking, talking. People were, how can you? Be friends with this person. I grew up with my father. I can, I can defend myself verbally at any, any time. Mm -hmm. So it's preparing you f for the rea yeah. reality of life for you. Yeah, mm. pretty much. Mm -hmm. His worst, his was his was, his childhood was even worse than mine. When I found out about it, I said, oh, "My goodness!" No. So I had it easy compared to what he did. How was his life? His uh, his parents his parents were uh, drunks. And they lost custody of him, and he was raised in the farm home in Corvallis. Oh my gosh! Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So he left when he was 16. He walked from Oregon to uh, Ava, Missouri, and uh, got adopted by his uncle. So and then he joined the Coast Guard. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So he was. Mine was much. <laughs> yeah, I was. You know, I had just had parents. You know, and and, and family. You know, he had nothing really. Did he tell you any stories about his growing no, up? No, he wouldn't. Mm -hmm. No, they. In fact, I didn't even find out about uh, this time in Vietnam until I had a North, North Vietnamese. I was a letter carrier, uh -huh. and a North Vietnamese letter carrier who's uh, had employed at my house to help me fix things, and my dad was there, slightly drunk, and said I probably shot some of your some of your uh, relatives. And his answer was good, good, good. <laughs> he didn't like the Vietnam, North Vietnamese either, so I don't, I don't know. So He's where was nothing. this? 1663, and this is this happened probably in, in the uh, nine, uh, two, yeah, late uh, mid mid twenties. So it was forty years. I never he never said a word to me, mm -hmm. and then blurts this out in front of somebody else. <laughs> yeah. No, he never he never talked about it. Never. Uh huh. Where is he now? He's uh, it's Bannaway, Washington. Uh huh. He's, he's going to be eighty-two. How is Mom's his health? 80. Uh, he's had brain surgery, for an aneurysm. He's lost eight relatives to that. Oh my alone. gosh! It seems to yeah. be a genetic factor. Huh? Yeah, yeah, and I watched my my aunt die. His sister die from it. He's had a cousin who died from it, a number of them just poo. So they found his, luckily. He's had carotid arteries, he's, he's, but he's, he's still around, still fighting. Yeah. Yeah. How is his spirits with all that's been going on with him in his life? Uh, he's is, is fairly there? good, fairly good. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, How about but, your mom? Yeah, she's 80. And uh, they're, I figure they've been trying, they've probably been trying to kill each other since. 50 years ago, <laughs> they have a very volatile, but they stay together. They just stay together. They, I can't handle this anymore. But I told my mother, Mom, you don't talk to me, your father. You don't talk to my dad. You order him around. Yeah, she talks. She says, do, sit here, do this, do that, do the other. I says, Mom, you're just ordering. Nobody wants to sit there and do this. But that's what they. That's what she does. That's what they adjusted that's what she to does. each other. Yeah, they've adjusted it. Yeah. Yeah. But he needs somebody around, and she's around, so uh -huh. she's just, nobody did, else to do it. Did you have any college? A little bit, yeah. I went to the accounting at PSU, but found out that Boise State University. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But accounting is the it's like the old joke about the accountant, who's bookkeeping is linear. It's yeah. It's it's you put the numbers are what they are, and the accountant will say you know. The ones one was was uh, what do you want the books to say? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was that was a joke. What do you want the books to say? <laughs> I'll make it say it. 
<laughs> yeah, it was a more theory than, than 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 that, and I just didn't like it. Yeah. So I quit and I went to join the Oregon Air National Guard and did the uh, did some of that. How for long about six were, years? How long were you in the Air six National years. Guard? Six years. Six years. Yeah. And you ever been called up? Again? No, yeah. I was I was between. Seventy five was when I graduated, mm -hmm. so that was the Vietnam War was over. Yeah. And I was out in eighty one before anything else happened. Mm -hmm. You know. But I was there uh, for the six years and worked out at the airbase for a while, too. Are you watching that series on public television now about Vietnam, the Vietnam War? No, I always, I, I, I read history. I, I, I love to read history and uh, it was just a mess. And you read fast? Yeah. How'd that come to you, reading it's that fast? It's just normal. It's normal, 400 words, that, that was what tested. Tested at, what, 100 words per, 400 words per minute. 100% comprehension, I just did it. It's just That's it's, unusual, isn't it? I just sit there and read. My mother was complaining that I, I would eat, read at the, at the dinner table. And she says, well, nobody's supposed to have conversation, but you, we're not supposed to talk with her with a mouthful, mouthful. So, oh, yeah. why I I that, so why can't I read? So why can't I read? You're in trouble from the get-go. Yes, but you do anyone wanted to do, yes. Yeah. No, uh, because the Vietnam War, they just fought it wrong. It was total. It was total. You can't have the president deciding who where to bomb. It's not. It's not a. It's not a game. It's mm -hmm. life and death, and you don't. You don't play around with it. And that was to me. That was. It was. It was a. It was a political. Oh yeah. Yeah. You don't. Don't make it political. An interesting series with Ken Burns has done a number mm -hmm. of series like oh, this, yeah. and he's outstanding. I'm a Civil War buff, and I just. I, I love that one. Oh. But I didn't watch the Vietnam stuff because it's always. Blaming other people, blaming the people who were there, blaming the people, you know, and you have politicians telling you what to do, and you know, and then you get blamed for for things happening. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Do uh, what are you doing now? You have any employment now at all? Well, or? I was uh, I worked 25 years at the post office. Oh yeah, you mentioned yeah. that. Yeah, and uh, but my knees gave out. I have bone on bone on the inside of my knees, so I've got uh, disability retirement. Uh, but I'm in between, so I I I can work. So I decided to do the lift because I'm driving other people around. Oh, I see. Yeah, I remember yeah. now. And so lift is uh, like a, a, a taxi personal thing. taxi yeah. service. Yeah. So I rent. I I lease the vehicle, and I drive around, and I finally figured it out. But pay the bills? No, yeah, no, it doesn't yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> so you, have, you, have to to you have to figure out how to get more more rides, and there's a system is where, but they don't tell you. You have to figure it out. Uh, how long have you been doing this? About two months. Two? Oh, it's relatively yeah, it's brand, yeah, brand new, new for me. Yeah. yeah. You think you'll be sticking with it? Oh yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. I'm good at it. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, do you have a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, I have a girlfriend. wife? Girlfriend. I've been married three times. I'm still looking for number four. Yeah? Yeah. But the one that I have a girlfriend right now, she doesn't want to get married. Uh -huh. So I, it's kind of... It wins some of those. Sounds yeah, like yeah. You know, some of those you just got to decide, you know, if some number four decides she wants to get married, you know, and then, uh, then I will. You've been married before. Yeah, three times. That's right. Yeah. I made okay. mistakes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Any, First, uh, any children? Yeah, I have uh, a son and three daughters. I had four daughters. Mm -hmm. uh, one died at a day old. Uh -huh. She had a herniated diaphragm. So. Oh was, wow! Yeah. She died in my arms. It was still, still painful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Politically, are you a political person Republican. or not? Republican. Republican, huh? Yeah. Are you a left, right, or center on the continuum? Center. You're More of a center. Center, huh? Yeah, I don't, I'm not, lib well, I'm liberal about some things, but yeah. other things I'm not. What do you, you think know? about Trump? I'm, I'm thankful that he got elected, but huh. I wasn't happy that we had to have choose him. <laughs> yeah, it could have been, please could have been somebody else. Why you know, not Hillary? I I remember somebody. I remember the Hillary and well, Bill the Bill years, and I just I just one of those. It, there's something about it. I just uh, she scares me. I don't know what it is. Mm, I just yeah. don't trust her. 
I don't trust him. I don't, the whole thing. And people say, well, if we have a war, people dying in foreign countries, I says, well, how about the people that died while they were president, and he was president in this country? <laughs> how about the people in Waco and the people in Ruby Bridge? I mean, what about, you know, I mean, the things that's happened, it's just, the Clintons. Is <laughs> have you read about those people we're talking about now? You said you read a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've read, you know, yeah. Like I said, I don't exactly wholeheartedly defend them, or, you know, Trump's, Trump's there. What do you, you think know? of Bernie Sanders? He was, he was I, I kind of liked him, but I was I'm more Repub Republican. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've voted for Rice. The one, I, the one who I wished would have ran was uh, Jean Kirkpatrick. I really enjoyed Kirkpatrick, her. Kirkpatrick, yeah. Yeah, the UN ambassador. Yeah, she yeah. was wonderful. Uh -huh. I read one of her books. I couldn't understand it, but it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> you're dangerous. <laughs> I see why you're associated with our friend, John. Uh, okay, membership, uh, memberships in political, social, or civic organizations. Any memberships you care to mention? Now? Uh, I bowl, but that's <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. No, is there I don't. a bowling league? Or yeah, something? no. I, but I, my knees are so bad now; it's, it's it's a joke. I can't do Have it. Have you thought about surgery on your knees? Yeah, but I'm scared. I've never had anything done to me. I've never. I'm 60 years old. I've got my my tonsils and my adenoids and everything. Nobody's ever opened me up, and I'm just mm, that's going to be painful. And I'm not real sure about it. Yeah. But they tell me I just got to get it done. But they tell also tell me don't get it done because I have more range in my knees than most people do. I I can do things with my legs that the doctor's going. You have more range in, in your legs than I do, <laughs> so don't get it but done. But bone on bone. Bone on bone is yeah. Standing is painful. Well, here's a testimony now yeah. to the efficacy. I like that mm. word. Uh, yeah. Of surgery, I've had more surgeries than Carter's got pills. Mm -hmm. uh, next year I'll be ninety. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. I'm going in this Friday. They're going to do an outpatient mm. on the cyst on my wrist. Uh -huh. And I had a major surgery for my intestines were dying. Mm. And they replaced my knee, my left knee, oh, about eight years ago. It's incredible. Yeah, they tell me it's, it's great. It's unbelievable. And, and I've heard a few cases where people had difficulty with, with uh, knee replacement. Mm -hmm. But just fantastic. And my was bo I was bone on bone for a long time. Yeah. And now it's like I got a brand knee, brand new knee after seven or eight years. It's still working fine. So I'm suggesting cons reconsider yeah. having your knees replaced. Well, I'm go when I go to the doctors, they tell me you're too young. You're going to wear them out. They they keep telling me don't do it. But they said, but other people saying you have to get it done. And so I guess what I, what they tell me is you just have to f tell them, hey, I want it done. I think period. you need to just, yeah. You have to yeah. tell you. You need to do a little it. more research, a little yeah. more reading, because you're, uh, you're, you're a smart man. Yeah. And if you learn some more about objective data on the success of those mm -hmm. kinds of surgeries, then I think you have it done, because it's like a miracle. Like when I had my cataracts removed, mm -hmm. and uh, I discovered that I was not seeing colors for many, many years. Ooh, I yeah. was fighting with my wife about whether something was blue or green. <laughs> yeah. And finally, when I got my eyes replaced, I thought, my God, she was right all along. Oh, yeah. I'm still paying for that. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, my mother had a uh, problem with hers. She was essentially blind, and they did do one eye. Uh -huh. And but, she, but she's having trouble with, uh, with my father because she can't, he can't smoke now around her. Yeah, yeah, I'm and so that's you know how that is. And they, my father was just the three pack a day, and yeah, when he's in the car and he can't smoke, and he just then that's another tension. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you ever smoke? No, I I, I tried, tempted, I but I can't I can't take a deep breath. Yeah, I never done any drugs. That's I never tried question. marijuana. Never did. You really haven't tried weed? Never tried it. I tried it once or twice in my life, and that was uh, enough. It I drives was, me nuts. I just, <laughs> I just, my, my <laughs> son in law, my son in law, my son in law, who's, uh, well, ex son in law, he was, uh, he was uh, med medical. He had it for medical, medicinal purposes. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, the butter and stuff, we can do this. It helps your pain. And he says, I've got, you got your dad high on it. 
you know, um, I says, but I'm six years old. Why should I start now? Why start mm -hmm. now? And I don't see any, you know, it's just one of those things that I, my, they, I was drilled into me. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Oh, yeah. And my mother would, I've, I, I, was, I was struck. I was struck. So I was, I, when they told me, don't you do it or I'll, well, I believed them. <laughs> <laughs> I believed them. <laughs> they taught you. Huh? Yeah, yes. Because I remember the two times I tried, I tried it the second time to be sure, mm -hmm. and it's a damnedest feeling to have that kind of paranoia until it wears off. And yeah. some, there's a few people who are just can't go near it, otherwise mm -hmm. they get goofy. I'm goofy enough, just, <laughs> I, I, I can, yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm, 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 there's people who say, you're weird, yeah. you're weird. I, that's, that's I hope just so. Kind of, yeah, I mean, no, but. No, Portlanders, Portlanders are not as weird as Seattle people. I, uh, I, that was, that was, I found that out. This, I'd only been up to Seattle twice since I was born. What makes you say that? I was up there, and, and it's just the whole culture up there is more uh, acceptable of things that, to me, just, just, um, just would something I wouldn't even think of. Really. Are they like 21st century hippies or something? No, no, no. It was, it was, uh, it was. <laughs> It was coming, going up to the monorail. I was, I was thinking about going to, to the to Space Needle. Uh -huh. And here comes this 80-year-old man, probably, in a dress and makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, so get me back to Portland. <laughs> and then the next morning, I'm in line at the gas station, and here's a guy in a sundress. You know, and it's just with the man bun, and that was just like, oh, <laughs> Portlanders are not this bad. You know, they're not this. I thought you'd fit right in. No, Mark. I would. I don't fit that. No, I don't fit like that. I don't fit like that. All uh, right, last <laughs> question. Uh, any persons uh, in the past in your life or alive today that you particularly admired or look up to? Any names come to mind? Well, it was weird that I didn't think my father was as smart as he was. Really? I, I always thought he was kind of um, not dumb, you know, but I mean, he didn't teach me much. He just, he says, he just, get out of my way, I'm going to do it. But watching, figuring out finally that here's a man who can take blueprints and make, make it, yeah. do things, the things that he can do in his head, with his air conditioner refrigeration, we read the gauges and can tell you what, uh, you know, and fix things for just, boom, just do it. Mm -hmm. He just does things. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, but then I'm then you're thinking, I can't do that. I can't even, I can't even get to the technology to do that. But he, he's, it's, it's there. It's for him. It's just natural. And he's smarter than, than I gave, that I ever gave him credit for. And, um, like I says, I, I looked up to uh, Kirkpatrick, Reagan, uh -huh. uh, you know, and uh, the Kennedy years, even though I was young. Uh -huh. You know, I was, a, an, I was a Kennedy assassination fanatic, too. Me, too. Yeah, and I still believe that there's a second gunman. I have I no would, doubt in my mind. <laughs> none, <laughs> you know. So, but I, you know, it's one of those things where... Do you think? I just like I like to read, so I was reading a lot of stuff. And Bruce Catton from the from the Civil War uh, era, not this era, but uh, he wrote about it, and just so beautifully that, that it's one of those things I just never could put down. Back to the Kennedy assassination. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. think Oswald actually pulled the trigger? I think he probably may have shot, but I don't think that uh, the gun. Okay, because because I grew up with weapons, mm -hmm. the gun itself. They called it the Manica the, the, Yeah, the Manica Cana was a what they called a humanitarian weapon. It never killed anybody on purpose. Mm -hmm. It was a piece of crap. <laughs> <Big time. laughs> Sorry, it was just <laughs> junk. And it, this is this is you something that's not something you would use to to, to do it. Who killed Jack Kennedy? You think? Uh, I think it was the uh, the mob. Mm -hmm. I think it was the mob. I got a collection of of Mas writings. Mar Carlos Mastriano. Uh -huh. what, Jeff, what, 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 what Bobby Kennedy did to him? Oh, oh, you a pretty good researcher. On yes, that. I yeah. have a collection you of remember what he did? movies and and and, uh -huh. and books and a whole ton of stuff on you that remember, assassination. You remember what what Bobby Kennedy did to Carlos Mastriano? Yeah, he's gonna mobsters get the mafia. No, no, no. 
Where'd that you was, go? That was, he he actually had him taken to South America, not Central America, and left him. Yeah, like, remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that that that's, that was enough to make him mad. Mm -hmm. Boy, the, the <laughs> intrigue. Yeah, in and that time. and the and the thing was, don't kill. If you uh, lop off the tail, the dog won't die. You got to cut off the head, and that's what must. That's what I think. That's what I think happened. Will we ever learn uh, who really killed uh, uh, Jack Kennedy? No, no, I don't think so. Same with, with, with Watergate. They're never going to tell us what the Democrats were hiding, what the Republicans were trying to find. <laughs> we better abandon this because we're not getting anywhere at all. <laughs> I can come back. <laughs> so, okay, let's go and take a break, and then we'll come back and talk about okay. that device you got there I'm looking yeah. at right now. Okay, we are back, and thank you for staying tuned. And for you viewers who missed the opening of the show, Conversations with Dr. Don that you're watching is an ongoing series of one-hour standalone talk shows where I interview interesting people like my guest this evening here, Walter Miller, uh, about life in motion and other things we've talked about so far. And I uh, will know what he means by that life in motion. I have an idea because he said a few things, but you'll say them again while the cameras are rolling. Okay. So you ready to go? Yep. What do you mean by life in motion? We moved, uh, we moved 25 times before I was 18 years old. It was the 14 schools in six states and it just, uh, I've, it's constantly moving, constantly losing things, constantly you know, I mean, you didn't know where you're going to be. Did you have a moving trailer that you owned all the time? To no, all your stuff no, around? no. We were, we were just pack up and pack up and go. You would uh, throw it in, throw it in the whatever we could use truck. Uh -huh. It didn't matter. Just next thing you know, I'm gone. So because of your dad's uh, uh, being in the military is the reason for it. Well, being in the military, and there are other reasons that I won't go into. <laughs> Family <laughs> reasons. <laughs> All right. Uh -huh. But yeah, there were reasons that, that uh, say that uh, made little towns a little bit too small for him. Uh -huh. and, so, and we just get up and go. Okay. At the drop of the hat, and I never, sometimes never figured out why. But probably had a real strain on you getting an education, huh? Yeah, yeah. Like I guess there are gaps of. Things I don't know, English, that you know, and other uh, probably other subjects. But I was always uh, history. I love history. Mm -hmm. uh, reading about everything, going back from way back when. Reminds me of my childhood because I was born and raised in New Orleans, mm -hmm. and there were three cultures and three races. There's the the white, and they were called Negro at that time, mm -hmm. and then there were the the Creoles was mm -hmm. a, a racial mixture, but then the school system was such that there was just colored and white, yeah. and the school systems were so primitive until I barely made it through elementary school, and I dropped out of junior high school because I wasn't getting anything out of, out of school. The yeah. school, schools were so inferior, and it wasn't until many years later on that I got the courage to go into a public library because mm -hmm. Uh, they didn't didn't allow people like me in the library. Even. So I have an idea where you're coming from. Yeah, <laughs> but things have changed radically a whole bunch now. 
Well, when I was when I was growing up uh, in the sixties, because mm-hmm. I went to school, I sixty well, it'd be sixty four because I was born in February, so you have to wait until you're six, which is makes it sixty three. No, I'm not older. I'm I missed that cut, so I would go to, you know later in sixty three. So I'm uh, sixty three, sixty four. So when I started school, and we were moving so much, you know, I, the 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 white black race thing never entered into me at all. It wasn't. It didn't matter to me who I was with. It didn't. It was with. Did you like me? Did I like you? You know, uh-huh. people people say, you know, I don't I don't hate by race or by color. I hate individually. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I, I don't care. It's who you are. That's who I'm worried about. Who you are. Do I like you? Do you like me? If, if we're fine with that, it didn't matter to me. So you didn't experience a lot of ongoing racism. No, I didn't. Mm-hmm. I was. Uh, I didn't care. Uh-huh. We we were. I mean, we there there. There's a one guy. I don't know if he's still alive. Who we picked up on the a black gentleman we picked up on the side of the road in Iowa. He stayed with us for six weeks. Hey. Yeah, we didn't care. Uh, we you know we we, we just uh, it was just who who pe- who who people were. Uh-huh. You know, Indian. I still the Indian thing. It's just uh, I I I cut them all the slack in the world. Where you know? did you get that kind of belief system? Or because or you kindness? move so much. Because you move so much. You didn't care who your friends were. You did care, but it was people. It was. It wasn't. I didn't care about the, the, the white, the black. Didn't if matter. If somebody was nice to you, it was so. It was, you were it was so enough. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. It's, it's absolutely. I didn't. I, you know, and it was so rare because you, moving so much, you didn't get to get the, uh, the the the, peer pressure. I didn't have peer pressure. Mm-hmm. You know, mine was. Hey, I'll be. Uh, you don't like me? Fine, I'll be gone. <laughs> maybe next week, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when I grew up, I was it just it just, it just was just something that didn't matter to me. Uh-huh. You know, there there there, you know, I, uh, white white people, black people, all the same. It's just different different how they are inside. And life is still in motion for you. Oh yeah, I mean I've been, I moved so, but we've been here since 74 in the area. Mm-hmm. You know. But yeah, I've been married three times and I made mistakes and you know, I didn't get to sow my wild oats when I was young, so I did it when I was older. <laughs> yeah, I know about that one too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah, it's uh you know, I'm making mistakes and stuff, but you know, it's just, the tough part was you know, a lot of people saying uh don't have People dying in front of them, you know. I've had lost a daughter. I've watched my grandmother die. I've watched my aunt die. How old was the kid? She was a day. A day, day just a day. day. She was a day old. She had a hernia diaphragm. They knew it from before, so they did the surgery. And the CO2 went one way and oxygen went the other. Mm -hmm. And they unhooked her, and my my wife got to hold her for about 50 minutes. They put her in my arms. I looked up and she flatlined, just 15 seconds, boom. But uh, that was it, and just, just still is very I I can't imagine what that must be like because yeah. I have five daughters. Yeah, I screamed. So, uh, I was, uh, they could hear me screaming. It was such a oh. Uh. Mm-hmm. But time heals a little bit. But yeah. what turns you on nowadays in your life? What gives you some enjoyment, some excitement? I just, uh, like I said, I've been out here meeting all kinds of people. Uh, the lift, I, I've actually, <laughs> I hope they don't think I'm stalking them, but I mean, there are people that, that, I, that who, who take lift to go to work. Uh-huh. So sometimes I'm in that area, I'll get their call to take them to work. So there's one guy I take to the post office, this, uh, I've taken them three times so far. Mm-hmm. Another guy, another uh, surgeon, or a, a doctor who goes up to HSU. So I'll try to be in that area, uh-huh, you know, to, uh-huh. so if they, if I, if they, they can choose to, for me to take them. You get into conversations yeah. with them sometimes? Yeah, well, absolutely. We get into all kinds of I stuff. I can tell because and I got into one, you are. But I got into one conversation a couple of, well, night, like last night. And maybe I shouldn't have, but I, I'm a fan of, I like Richard Pryor. 
but he hasn't. He had an album. He had an album out years ago, mm-hmm. and I no, normally, it. normally <laughs> you can't you can't say the word because but that's the name of the album. Yeah. So I'm telling this. I'm talking to this guy, and I'm and I'm doing Richard Pryor because I can. I have a great memory. I'm doing the routines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he was I'm, funny. Yeah, and the, the eulogy, the eulogy on that album, that 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 the N word, crazy. That's 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 the name of the album. Uh-huh. The N word's crazy. And and the new eulogy, and he's talking. I, I just I say it, but I, this, this is not something I mean. It's the word. Yeah, yeah. It's that word, you know. But they, they you know, I, I was called worse when I was growing up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I don't. I don't. I remember the, the cut where he talks about when he set himself a fire. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But don't, that was that was a different. Don't album. wash me. Don't wash me. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't 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 wash me. <laughs> yeah, he was he was hilarious. Uh huh. But. So yeah. what what gives you uh, pleasure nowadays in, in your everyday existence? Anything comes to well, mind? But you it's, meet a, it's, a, it's, a weird, it's a weird thing. I cook. I love to cook. Hmm. And uh, so I've been experimenting. I, next time I come, I'll bring my my own pizza. You'll just <laughs> that I make. All right. I use provolone instead of mozzarella. To all the difference in the world. Mm-hmm. But I I like How'd to cook. How'd you learn to cook? My mother, my mother didn't teach me, uh, I, I, because I, I didn't like the way she cooked. So I, I had to make my own stuff. I like to make my own stuff. So I started I would experiment. And what I guess what got me was they, they were Girl Scouts. My sisters were. Uh-huh. So they had this cookie called a chocolate no-bake oatmeal cookie. No big. And I had to learn how to make it because it was wonderful. <laughs> you just, you make this, but you have to know how to cook it. If you don't cook it long enough, you have you can eat it with a, you have to eat it with a spoon. It's just like soup. Uh-huh. If you don't cook it too long, you couldn't, you couldn't eat it with a hammer or chisel. It just hardens. I got it to where it's just perfect. And it, but I, you didn't bake it. No, you don't bake it. You just cook it on the stove and you stir it and then you spoon it out on paper. On wax, on wax or parchment paper, and let it set. When's the last but, time you uh, made some of those? Uh, two weeks ago. Oh man, you should. I'll, should bring, I'll bring some. I'll bring some. Now. I'll bring some. I'll bring some. <laughs> oh yeah, I've, I've, I've actually had a restaurant here. Uh, uh, what, when I was delivering the mail to him, uh-huh. I would take him a batch, uh-huh. and they would he would get, they would give them out. They can't sell them, but they would give them out to their cut to their employees. Uh-huh. And uh, he says, if you can make this in. Uh, uh, Kitchen that, that the it's state will certified. certified. We'll sell them for you. Really? Yeah, yeah, we'll sell them. What part of town was that in? It's right up the street. Oh, it's in uh, Northport and uh, MLK and Russell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just a, I was a mailman there, but I mainly 15 years up uh, off Fremont and uh, uh, Wilshire Park area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was a mailman for there for years. I think it was probably the. One of the few mailmen who would get cards on Christmas from the dogs. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 I would 15, 20, 20 cards from the dogs on the route. They would, they would actually, they would actually give me, give me cards from their dogs because the dogs love me. I, I'm, I love them, and they can tell. And then, so I'm sitting there petting them, and the, the mailman who loves dogs. You know, but usually you know. the, the mailman don't well, you're not like supposed dogs, to, and you're not supposed to even pet them. That's yeah. a, you're not even supposed to get near them. You're not even supposed to give them a chance. Uh-huh. But I do. I just, I just love dogs. And they love. I grew up. Yeah, I grew up with them. I had to do all the stuff, and I grew up with the dogs. And yeah, cats too. It's weird to have a cat roll over on his back <laughs> walking up. <laughs> you know, because normally you know, they don't do, even do well, that. What? How do you explain that? Why is it I that don't, those kind of I animals think what like it is, is 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 it is it I can sit there and pet a dog or a cat. And for some reason, I could hit all the spots right under the collar, in the back, you know, get those spots. And with a cat, it's weird, is this, you sit there with the back and then you slowly pull their tail. But you slowly, slowly, and you let it just slip through your fingers. And they love it. They absolutely love it. What do you think about interspecies communication? I don't... 
I know that the cat can tell the dog that who's boss. <laughs> I've seen that happen a number yeah. of times, but, not, but other than that, that's, other than that, that's not what I'm talking about. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, the only, that's the only thing I've seen. I've I've seen. I, I suspect that there that is more of that going on. Yeah. Than we can that we can recognize by our neocortex because we are limited in our perception of what we can really perceive. That extra sensory perception, extra sensory because we have to define the sense that lets mm -hmm. us connect the way that you do with dogs and cats. I suspect that I have that degree, that to some degree, like babies, little babies, little mm -hmm. people, and dogs and, and cats. And uh, I lost my thought. But I, I, I enjoy it when I experience, like in a checkout line in a supermarket, for example, mm -hmm. there's a mom, typically a mom, sometimes a dad, with a, a two-year-old or even younger than that in, in mom's arms. And somehow or other, the baby and I connect our eyes. Oh, connect. yeah, I do. <laughs> it happens all the time. <laughs> and, and, yeah. yeah. And, and it, it's not just in the species, but among humans, there's a way of connecting that's beyond what we can perceive with our regular senses. And then I, I, I enjoy baby and I mm -hmm. connecting and without saying anything, and then suddenly a little smile comes on his face. Mm -hmm. And he and I look, and I'm moving over here, and he's following me with his little head. Mm -hmm. And right. mom, and you do what that's going you do, on. And you're doing that thing, aren't you? You do it when you're doing this <laughs> back and forth. And I, and I, and I will do it. I will do and the. And they're following you, but I'll, the eyes. I'll do and all of a sudden, the hand goes, and they're doing it. You're trying to follow you, my hand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But the dogs and cats do the same thing. They look at me, and they just, it's just like it's, they, they, they know. They just seem to know. Yeah. That they're, you know. They're, they're sensing. Yeah. They're sensing. I just reread for the third time a book about the elephant whisperer. That is the name of it. It's mm -hmm. a, a guy who has a preserve in Africa, and he has a reputation of being able to handle rogue elephants rather than have, uh, having them put down because they're dangerous for, for tourists. Yeah. Or if you got an elephant that's uh, so dangerous you're going to kill him. They get a hold of this guy. He's no, mm -hmm. known all over Africa. And as a last resort, he will take those rogue elephants in. And it's always never just one elephant. It's always a herd. Mm -hmm. And maybe three or four, five or six. And then given enough time, he communicates with them. And he doesn't describe how he communicates or what goes on. Yeah. He describes on how that elephant has been when he first got there, mm -hmm. how he or she has been six months or a year later. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the incidents that occur, it makes sort of a story. Mm -hmm. it, it, it validates my belief that there's interspecies communication. Oh, that's what you mean, okay. Yeah. Well, that's the, the, Even you, beyond you the me, rumblings of, of an elephant yeah. that you, can, you can't hear. Do you, have you, ever, you read your book, Sea Biscuit? No. It's one of my favorites. The Tom Smith, who was there, who was the trainer, mm -hmm. he had that same ability. With horses, really? Yeah, he he. Horse whisperer. Yeah, he could. No, he he did things that they, he would make up stuff for his for his legs or stuff like that. Yeah, he took a he took a, a horse who was trained so badly, beaten beaten with the with the thing, yeah, and and it. made him a champion, because he knew what the horse was. He could he, he there was something about horses that he knew. He was a plainsman, and he he he. he Cut horses for the Boers, for the Boer Wars. I mean, he was is that the Boer type of man? Wars. Yeah. Sea a, biscuit. Yeah. You know who the author is? Yeah, uh, Laura Laura Hildebrand. You see, and Sea Biscuit was a uh, was it grandson of Man of War. Laura, you know how to spell her last name? H i l uh, Hilde H i l d Brand. Yeah. <laughs> Hild, Hild, Hilda? Yeah, Hildebrand, yeah, I think that's... That's good enough. Yeah. Because those kinds of stories... Yeah, the movie is wonderful, me. yeah. It's, it, she talks about it about in the book, about how wonderful he was and with the, horses. It's the name of a movie? Yeah, Seabiscuit. Uh, and how long ago was this movie made, roughly? <sighs> Ten years, Ten, fifteen years? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Okay, I've got to find that sucker. It's wonderful, and it's, it's uh, 
that people Those who know horses uh, would, would I, to me, uh, you know, Secretariat was the the ultimate horse, but I I, I would put Sea Biscuit against. It. They're they're both uh, well. Sea Biscuit was Man of War's grandson, and they said the the best horse race you've ever saw was Sea Biscuit and War Admiral. Yeah, who's a where War Admiral is a Man of War's son, uh -huh. and yeah, and nobody gave this because the horses looked so different. Man of War is beautiful, perfect looking horse. Sea Biscuit looks like a, a milk truck horse. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just a little, and, and Rand had a weird, weird way of Rand, but beat, beat War Admiral by four lengths, by four lengths, and they said, how did he do it? He just had the horse, just wouldn't quit. It was the whole thing, the, 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 it was wonderful. 1938, they, they'll tell you, 1938, Sea Biscuit had more uh, oh, paper, no, more newspaper room than Hitler, Roosevelt, anybody, anybody, that horse, yeah. You have any more stories about you and your relationship with uh, the dogs and the cats? I, I grew up, trip? I grew up watching them, whole, you know, feeding them, um, in fact, one dog, one dog bit me, <laughs> not that one, I was coming home from church, and a, a, a six-month-old German Shepherd bit me on one calf, bit me on the other calf. I said, I'm li I'm same dog? Leg. Same dog, yeah. Cause I'm lift, Sa I'm lift, same event? Same event. I'm lifting one leg up, he bites me on the other <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So two days later... Did you become my, a terrified of all dogs? No, no. I, I, but you, being bit is part, part, of, part, of, part of it. Being bit's part of it. I've, I've had one dog who I could stick my hand down his throat. And he's a raw... He was a... Doberman with Rottweiler head and body, monster dog. But I could stick my hand down his throat, and we'd play. We'd play around. <laughs> yeah, he was a wonderful, wonderful dog. You know why? Because you're weird. Yes, yeah, so that's why. <laughs> so but funny. what was weird was we had a white German Shepherd, and two days after this ad incident where I'm waiting, she's sniffing my legs. Two days later, she gets loose, and you hear this god awful screaming, and she had bolted out of the yard, gone down to where that dog was, had it on its back, she had her jaws around his neck and she was killing it. I had to physically pick her up off this dog to let, and let him go. And then ta I, I, I walked her back home. Yeah, she, she, she bit me. She bit, that dog had bitten me and she, she was, I don't know, she had for some reason, she was protecting me. Or doing something. I, f and first time had, it ever happened. And you had that sensing huh, that she was yeah, just protecting you. Yeah, she was protecting you. me, and I could. That dog ran every time she saw me after that. Well, I don't think my emotions would have allowed me to, to rationalize as you no, just did. No, to me it was just, 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 she was because there's a love built up. You know, I mean, she was sitting. She was sitting there in the snow, and we. She was just sitting there. Somebody had abandoned her, so I gave her some more help. Some uh, of a uh, hamburger that we had left of uh, after this meal we had, and she became our dog. That was it, you know. And but uh, every dog either slept in bed with me, or slept on the floor, or just slept around me. Yeah. Do you have a dog now? No, unfortunately, I don't. You can't have him where I was. We had dachshunds. Dachshunds are wonderful. They just crawl right in. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, I had uh, just, and uh, the, the only reason I was able to marry my third wife was because the dog liked me. If she, that dog hadn't liked me, I wouldn't have gotten married. <laughs> 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 but there was, the, the dog was kind of, she was kind of a, a just leery. Oh, this yeah. dog was leery of everybody. Mm -hmm. She had those eyes that were just kind of, you know, I'm not sure about you, you know, but I'd come over and I'd start petting, and the next thing you know, yeah, she's... <laughs> nudging me, yeah. But was the first, the first, uh, my first wife. They had a dog that was a Chihuahua, little Chihuahua, but it bit everybody in the house. Everybody bit, got bit. <laughs> so she, they never let the dog out with me when I was around for this first six months that I knew her. One day I just said, just let him go, just let him go, and he just came by, sniffed, walked around. That was it. And after a while. Next thing, I got to the point where he was sleeping in my lap. Yeah, never bit me. He'd come out there and I'd pet him and he'd fall asleep in my lap. I just had this one, this 
something about animals. I just, I like them and they just, something, something's there. So you're an animal whisperer. We're not quite you're sure. You're not an animal whisperer, you know, but I love them. And whisperer, they can that's tell. a way of a spiritual connection for yeah. one of a better And word, horses, too. I like horses and I, you know, and, uh, yeah, it's all animals. One thing that just, oh, it still, still, still makes me angry was I was, because I was small, um, I was able to crawl underneath this guy's house who lived next door to us in, in Iowa. We're going to have to stop oh, in about okay. 30 seconds. Okay. He had cats, a cat, they put kittens underneath his house. Yeah. He had me pull the cats out, the kittens found for him. What he did with them? Bashed their heads in. Mm. Right in front of me. Mm. I couldn't, I couldn't, I still, makes me, still makes me angry. Yeah. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yell at me unless we stop. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I want you to look into that camera and say to the, the to the viewers whatever you want to say to them about just, whatever we talked about. I don't anything, know, just anything, everything, anything love everybody. <laughs> love everybody. You're looking at that the camera? Yes. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, which, um, whichever one. I know. Like everybody? Yeah. Including me? Mm -hmm. Including you, especially you. <laughs> anybody. You know, just, you, you got you to find out who they are. All right. Yeah, choice. So let's stop now and have a public service announcement or two okay. before we stop. Uh, the ACLU, that's one of my favorite organizations. Mm -hmm. I've been a member of that for about 40 years. The American Civil Liberties Union, that supersedes everything else. Our yeah, civil okay. liberties are precious yes. to make our country work. And I want to tell you about how to end corporate personhood. Corporations are not persons, and mm -hmm. money is not speech. We need to have a constitutional amendment that says that so that we can change that Supreme Court ruling. Corporations are persons. Oh, 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 thanks for watching. Remember KFC, not Kentucky, not Kentucky yeah, Fried Chicken, Dr. Don's kind, KFC. Kind, kindness, Fr friendly, <laughs> and ch 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 charitable. Ch charitable. Ch ch okay, something like that. I remember something like that. Be I kind, be friendly, and be charitable to you too, yeah. and you too, kind, and you okay. too, and nurse in the control room. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and I enjoyed you watching, and I enjoyed our discussion and our talk. Thanks again. Thank you. <laughs>